maybe you can give us a bit of your background and, and your history, how you mm -hmm. became a journalist and a, and a publisher. It's a good question. Why did I become a journalist? I always liked to write. Yeah. I was good at writing also in school. But actually, originally, I wanted to become a farmer, <laughs> like many boys, I think. <laughs> and uh, it's hard to say, actually, then I studied first law, then I thought that's, that's a little bit boring. So I switched to history, and then I wanted to become a professor, which was not very original. But You were all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> I, just thought, I just thought, okay, when I'm at the university, it was so nice, so let's, <laughs> let's, let's stay. stay there, let's stay there. <laughs> No, and then uh, by chance, actually, I, I got the opportunity to, uh, to, to a traineeship at a local newspaper in Baden, a very small newspaper. And then I just realized, hey, writing about politics, that's something which is really interesting for me. Mm -hmm. And so I started to become a, a journalist. One of the thing I was, things I was really, really surprised about when I was at your office mm -hmm. recently was that picture and that maybe question, can we publish? Can we use that picture in the yeah, video? Sure, sure. So I'm that picture says <laughs> So that picture, that poster in your office says Vele Socialistisch. It's a very interesting uh, historical document. It was actually about the election in nineteen nineteen and that was the first time when Switzerland uh, voted for parliament in a different system which meant that the Social Democrats grew very, very strong. And that was a, yeah, you can say that was an important turning point in the political history of Switzerland. So that's the reason why I still think this poster is really worth <laughs> looking at. And it's also a nice poster in a way, because you, yeah. you can realize that at that time, the socialists, they really had... The, they had a real mission back then. Absolutely, and yeah. they thought the future belongs to us and yeah. it's it's yeah. a it's a nice poster in a way yeah. and nowadays I, I wouldn't say they they are really the future of course so you turned from uh, you were once upon a time you were a socialist and now you've turned more um, conservative free market absolutely libertarian yeah. where would you position yourself liberal in the classical European sense I would yeah. say liberal in, in the US means left-wing that's not the same not but the in same. Europe liberal is actually the the right term for my political yeah. uh, affiliation and I mean you know I come from a family which was for uh, for centuries a little bit exaggerated but they they were always liberals free Democrats that's the free Democratic Party of Switzerland used to be the most powerful party in the country established actually also the modern federal, federal state, so it's a very important party. And when you grow up with a father who was officer and, you know, <laughs> and he was also CEO of a big company and he was, of course, a free democrat. You had you know, to rebel just, a little bit. You just bit. turn left a little bit because you want to you wanna rebel, rebel against your father and against the tradition of your family, I think. That's, that was in my case. And also, I mean... It's just, a, uh, it's just a fact, if you study history, you turn left. Because the history departments in Switzerland, in Germany, nowadays, even in the US, they are just left-wing. So how were you able to make the U-turn? I think there are two, two interesting or important um, turning points. First of all, when I was with the Tagesanzeiger, the Tagesanzeiger is the biggest uh, liberal, in the American sense, left-wing, newspaper daily in newspaper Switzerland yeah. very influential and so on that's actually the newspaper I started with my uh, with my job and in, in Bern I was a uh, part of the team covering federal policy politics so when I got to the parliament I just realized at that time I was still a, a fan of the European Union and then I realized something very important which has to do a lot uh, with the success of Switzerland. I realized that we have a special system. We have a direct democracy, which means that from time to time, there is a referendum on many, many very important issues in this mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is actually that usually you, you don't realize how important that is also in the parliament, because actually in the parliament, everybody, every politician, it doesn't matter if he's left-wing or he's a conservative, Every politician knows whenever we pass a law, mm -hmm. we have to make sure that a majority is safe. The majority is safe. That means 
even if there will be a referendum, and you can never say, you can never say if there is a referendum, even if there is a referendum, we have to win. We have to win over a majority of the people mm -hmm. in case. Mm -hmm. That means we have to pass a law which is pragmatic, which is reasonable, which is uh, consensual. And I think that's one of the reasons why we have still very, very smart laws. Our laws are much more pragmatic than in other countries where where the parliament can pass a law without without any referenda. And then when I realized this, I, I just I just realized, hey, we can never join the European Union. It's impossible because, because this very special system of Switzerland is incompatible with uh, the European system. So you basically recognized the, the uniqueness of the Swiss system, yeah, that of was its direct very, democracy. Exactly. That which, was very important, actually, as, a, as, a, as an experience. And I experienced it just, you know, at the spot where, where laws are passed. And that was quite a surprise. And I think many people in the country don't know that. Mm. We have to tell people that mm. the politicians, they are really afraid of them. They really know, hey, it's not so easy to pass a law if everybody has the right to vote on it. Yep. Initiatives and, and then referendums. Absolutely. And then I went to the US for uh, another, another stay at the university in Harvard. And there I did a Master of Public Administration. Okay. And at that time, Harvard was still very much dominated actually by Clinton Democrats. Okay. And I think those were reasonable people. They were, you know, they, they didn't believe in socialism mm -hmm. at the first time. Mm -hmm. At that time. I at mean, the Democrats time. nowadays changed, are different. Yeah. It changed. has changed a lot. But at that time, you had reasonable Democrats. Yeah. They were brilliant. They were funny. They were smart. And at the same time, they had a good opinion of capitalism. Mm -hmm. And I think the U.S. was really important because at that time, the U.S. was still more liberal in the European sense than Europe. I just realized, hey, it might be possible that somebody who is smart can also be a right winger. Because at that time, you know, we were so arrogant. Yeah. At that time at the university, we were so arrogant. We thought, hey, there was a, there was a saying, the spirit or intelligence is always on the left side. I think they still believe that. Yeah, yeah, they, still, yeah they still believe that, which is not true. So I think, I mean, I think it has to do with my career as a journalist that, you know, if you really cover the politics, you just realize, hey, many, many ideas of the left just don't work out. If I look at journalists today, most of them still, they're having a hard time. I wish more of them would follow, <laughs> follow your lead because at this point there's, uh, I think the majority of the media is left-leaning mm -hmm. and um, the story that we get from most mainstream media is, is very it's one story, it's a single story, and that's, I mean, mm -hmm. that's when misconceptions and, uh, and uh, ideologies su mm -hmm. suddenly become reality. So, um, and that kind of brings us to your project of Nebelspalter. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's, that's really the baby that you've been growing now for the past two years. Mm -hmm. For our English-speaking audience, we have to explain that Nebelspalter means the fog splitter. So basically, exactly. yeah, you exactly. know, to provide some clarity. And, and yeah. that as a mission, I think, is awesome. Yeah, that was so, also the reason why I fell I, in I love. I think that's what you like. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's just a fast, fantastic brand. And I also have to, to say, you know, as a historian, the Nebelspalter has actually an, a cartoon on every topic that was important in Swiss history in the last 150 years. It's a huge archive. Yeah, yeah. It used to be actually a satirical magazine. Yeah. It was founded in uh, 1875. Yeah. And... At that point, it's now the oldest still existing satirical magazine in the world. So that's quite something. That was also the reason why I bought it. Right. On the other hand, I have, to, I have to admit, it's also difficult because actually we want to turn this Nebelspalte to something else. Yep. I mean, still we are a satirical magazine as far as the print is concerned. But we have also now a digital edition, and that's much more important for us. This is a kind of news platform. And that's really the main thrust of what you're doing today. Exactly. It's really that that's... online portal approach. Exactly. Yeah. It's an awesome project. I'm a fan. Mm -hmm. uh, but you. let us. Why don't you tell us a bit more about your your vision and and idea of Nebelspalter? I want to build a, a news platform which is liberal, 
which is different from the mainstream you were talking yeah. about, because that's also my my impression that the the media turned just very very left wing, and almost all of them. That's the problem, and it's not only the problem in Switzerland. It's also a it's problem everywhere. in the U.S. It's yeah. a problem in, in the Europe. West. It's it's yeah. it's actually a fact for almost every yeah. Western country, and I think this is really dangerous. Mm -hmm. Because it's not good. I think I, I really believe in the competition of ideas. Mm -hmm. I really think it's extremely important for a democracy that we have different perspectives. Absolutely. I mean, I'm absolutely convinced the left, they are wrong about many, many things, about all of the things, maybe. <laughs> but still, I think it's okay. They, they are useful because I, I need also somebody I can, I can discuss with. But on the other hand, if it's so distorted, if there's only one voice, yep. and this is a left-wing voice, we have mm -hmm. a problem. And the Nebelspalt tries to become this different voice in Switzerland, mm -hmm. a liberal voice, but also a very accurate voice. I think if you ask me about, you know, what are your most important key principles mm -hmm. in journalism, I really think first it has to be news. I mean, a news doesn't, me doesn't mean it has to happen now. It has to ha it has to be something which is relevant, which is interesting, mm -hmm. which you read and then you think, hey, I didn't know that. Interesting. I want to tell my wife about that. That's I think <laughs> that's important. It has to be news. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. The other thing is that actually it it has to be precise, accurate. I mean, I prefer facts. I really think this is also one of the reasons why the West actually was su successful because. We are quite empirical. I mean, everybody is much more empirical than uh, many, many people in other places in the world. So I think this is a success story. At, used to, at least that's part of our DNA. Yeah. We need to get used back to, to that. used to be the yeah. part of our <laughs> DNA. Yeah. And now it's, uh, yeah, it's also in, 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 in danger, actually. Yeah, yeah. But still, I think for a good platform, it's extremely important that you are accurate, that people think you are reliable, yep. you don't exaggerate, you don't lie, you yep. don't distort the facts. I think, I mean, what, what I like about the Nebelspalter, though, in addition to what you say, I think it, it's also entertaining. Oh, okay. Yep. You know, so I mean, I, I listen, and my wife too, my wife mm -hmm. and I, we often together, mm -hmm. sometimes on the weekends, we mm -hmm. listen to all five episodes mm -hmm. of the week of the Bern Einfach. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And uh, that is entertaining too. You guys Absolutely. are funny. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's also a little bit the, the goal. I mean, yeah. we have to be funny. Especially us on the more conservative or liberal side, it's important that we tell the story mm -hmm. in a less boring way. Mm -hmm. Because the way we tend to be is very dry and fact and, and statistics oriented, right? And uh, exactly. you kind of need both. So I really, I really like the way you guys are doing that. I also think this is a problem with the conservatives. You are absolutely right that the conservatives, they are, you know, they are too serious often, mm -hmm. above all in Switzerland, of course. Yeah. And it's an interesting fact that, for example, maybe you know William uh, Buckley. That was a yeah. very important conservative in the US in the 1950s. And one reason why he was so successful was actually the fact that he was a very nice person. He was a gentleman and he was funny. Yeah. He was funny. And at that time, people thought, hey, everybody who is conservative must be serious and boring <laughs> yeah. and ugly. Yeah. And he was such a lighthearted person. Another guy that had a great humor was Ronald Reagan. Oh, right? very I important. mean, he was, he had, he was so charming and uh, yeah. he, he, had, he had humor, which was awesome. People have to feel that you are serious, but on the other hand, you are not so damn sure that you are right. I think... Right. This is so stupid if people think, hey, I know everything. I am like God. And I think yeah. this is one reason why Yeah, it makes think... you more approachable and human. So going back to the Nebelspalt, one of the things that I thought you did really well and, and I, I was really intrigued by was the fact that you actually brought together, I guess, like 60 or, or 70 investors, mm -hmm. um, which most of them, I think, from what you said, were entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So so you... Um, you basically were able to finance the project with uh, with a contribution from that entrepreneurial heart of Switzerland, mm -hmm. which I thought was excellent also to, to start the project that way. Does does that help you today still? Do you get support from those entrepreneurs? Absolutely. Because, yeah. I think that's a, that was a wonderful experience actually, yeah. also for me personally, yeah. because I had, to, I had to do the fundraising and in the beginning, I didn't know that there are so many people who really care about journalism in Switzerland, yeah. 
who really were prepared to support this right. kind of project. And as everybody knows, media is not really the best investment. I don't today. think they went in for the investment. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> no, really. No, but you know, you also have to believe in this Absolutely. project. And that was just a great experience. Yeah. And, and yeah. this kind of trust. Because, I mean, they had to invest like 100,000 francs, which is... Was that pretty much everyone put 100,000? Everybody, everybody had to invest just 100,000 uh, francs, but not more and not less. Yeah. And, I mean, this is a lot of money. And this is a lot of trust. Mm. And this is also a lot of responsibility for me yeah. to make it happen. I mean, this project has to be a success, of course. But I also think it shows actually, you know, how... How many people are still around who really care about this country, about Absolutely. the future of this country? And I also think it was no coincidence that most of them, as you said, were entrepreneurs. Yeah. They know how important entrepreneurs were in the history of Switzerland yeah. and how important they still are going to be in the future. So.